Hey everyone, so if you're coming here from the previous video in this series, I basically did somewhat of an unboxing of my new 2023 Kona Hanzo steel hardtail frame. And one of the first things I want to do is to convert my old RockShox Revelation from 150 millimeters of travel down to 140, just so that I get the proper axle to crown dimension for the intended geometry for the Hanzo. So in this video, a quick how-to on the process of changing the travel length on your RockShox fork. Now, as far as components, the only thing you actually need to buy is a new air spring. So here I have the new version of the RockShox Devon Air spring. Now this actually says that it's for a Pike 140 millimeter travel fork, but I believe it's the Lyric, the Pike, the Revelation and the Zeb that all use the same dampers across the range. You just have to check the model number on the manual, which I'll put a link to down in the description. If you're curious for this particular application, going from 150 millimeters down to 140 on our 2018 Revelation, the part number is here. Okay, so I know there's a lot of different videos out there on how to do this, but I'm gonna be following the RockShox manual basically word for word, so that as you're watching this video, you can be absolutely certain that this is how the manufacturer wants you to do this process. Okay, so as far as things that you're gonna need, you're gonna want some shop towels, some safety glasses, is for when we remove the retaining ring, a pair of gloves, and some type of oil pan or something to catch the oil as it drips out of the lowers. Now for fluids, the manual calls for Maxima Plush Dynamic Suspension Lube Light and heavy, but interestingly, it says RockShox 0W30 for both of those instances. So I'm gonna be using RockShox 0W30 in lieu of the plush light lube. And then for the heavy, I'm gonna use a little bit of this Fox Float fluid, which is a little bit thicker and should help stick a little bit better to the upper part of the air spring. You also want some grease for the seals and the recommendation is to use SRAM butter. It's also really handy to have some isopropyl alcohol to keep things nice and clean as you go. Now for tools to remove the air spring top cap, sometimes it'll call for a cassette tool, but in my case, there's no cassette interface. So I just use an adjustable wrench to get the top cap off. Some other basic tools that you need are a set of Allen wrenches, specifically 2.5, 5, and 8 millimeters. These are snap ring pliers. These are gonna help you to remove the retaining ring at the bottom of the air spring. You're also gonna want some hex bits and a torque wrench, some type of stick or wooden dowel when it's time to regrease. You're also gonna need a rubber mallet to dislodge the bottoms of the spring and the damper from the lowers. And you may or may not need some needle nose pliers and a flat blade screwdriver as well. So first we're gonna do is to clamp the steer into a work stand. And then we're just gonna remove the top cap for the air spring. That should just unscrew by hand. we will set that somewhere safe. Next thing you wanna do is to depress the Schrader valve to let out all the air in the fork. And you should see the fork lowers kind of contract upwards. Now at the bottom of the fork on the drive side, we're gonna use a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench to loosen the set screw for the rebound adjustment knob. That should allow us to pull the knob off, like so. And then next we're gonna use a five millimeter Allen wrench to loosen both of the bottom bolts a few turns, but we're not gonna take them all the way out. Now is when I'll usually put on gloves because we're gonna pull the lowers off next and the oil is gonna drain out of that. You can place your oil catching container underneath. So we're actually gonna use the screws that we loosened but didn't remove to sort of punch up the spring and the damper that are press fit into the bottom of the lowers. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can hit the bolt directly if you have good aim, or you can put an Allen wrench into the bolt and hit the end of the wrench with the mallet. So once you do that, you can remove the bolts. And then all of a sudden, you just want to pull them down at the same time, like you're pantsing a buddy or something. Don't do that. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Pull. And set those down somewhere. And we're gonna remove the top cap on the air side next. The manual actually calls for a 24 millimeter socket, or in some cases, the cassette tool fit right in here and you can use that. Now, I don't actually have a 24 millimeter socket and the ones that I do, like most sockets, aren't actually flush. There's a little bit of an inner bevel, which is not gonna be great for engaging with the top cap here. So you can buy flush mount sockets specific for this job that are nice and flat. However, if you're careful, you can get away with using just an adjustable wrench on this part. So the top cap will just pull right out like so. We're gonna go back to the bottom of the fork now and remove the retaining ring. That ring right there needs to be removed and that'll let the whole spring slide out. So snap ring pliers are gonna be your best friend here and also safety glasses. There's a lot of energy stored in that little spring and you don't want that to pop off and hit you in the face. Basically, you're trying to just squeeze those two eyelets together enough so that you can pull the retaining pin out. So the goal now is to actually just pull the whole air spring out, kind of just get a nice grip on it, and hopefully it'll just pop out like so. It's gonna take some isopropyl and clean the inside and the outside of the upper stanchions. What you may wanna do is grab something non-marring, put the shop towel on it, and just kind of wipe down the inner. 
Last thing you want to do is to scratch the inner surface of the upper stanchions. So be real careful not to do that. So now that the upper stanchions are clean, we're just going to go ahead and re-grease the inside with some fresh grease. The manual says to basically grease up a wooden stick. The recommendation is 150 millimeters into the stanchion measured from the bottom. So because we're going purely by the book, I'll measure 150 millimeters and that's about how far up we're going to put the grease into the upper stanchion. Now with grease, a little bit does go a long way. There's no need to overdo it. Just make sure you get enough to coat the inside of the upper stanchion completely. Go in 150 millimeters, just kind of smear that around. It's like a giant COVID test for your fork. Just kind of swab that around in there. Okay. Next, we're gonna actually open up the new spring. So to prep the new spring, we wanna get grease onto the contact points with the inside part of the stanchion. That's gonna be the O-rings on the piston and the seal head. That's about how much I'll generally put on it. Let me know down in the comments if this is too much, too little. Where are you at with grease volume? Now we also wanna apply a little bit of oil to the spring shaft. The manual calls for a maximum plush heavy. I've been using the heavier weight Fox fluid for this part of the application and it seems to work really well. The manual calls for one milliliter. It's really just enough to coat the air spring shaft. That's super slick right now, super nice. Okay, so with the spring all prepped, we're gonna now push it back into the upper stanchion. You may have to do a little bit of twisting and then it'll kind of pop in. And then the trick is to push the lower part all the way into the stanchion, like so. Now, the key is to kind of make sure that the spring is all the way up into the stanchion so that the retaining clip can sit on its perch. I prefer to use like a non-marring trim panel remover. This is basically plastic and it won't do any damage if you slip. So just kind of push that in there, make sure it's really all the way seated, which it seems like it is. And then for retaining rings, there's a rounded edge and then a sort of more sharp edge. And that sharp edge you want facing down so that it really engages with its perch. Okay, so safety goggles still on. You wanna squeeze the two eyelets together, push it in, and make sure it seats all the way into its perch. Okay, so with the retaining ring back in, we're gonna go back to the top of the fork. The manual actually calls for adding a little bit of oil in the top as I think just sort of a little bath to keep the upper part lubed. Now again, this calls for Maxima Plush Heavy, but like I said, I've actually been using this thicker Fox float fluid for the top here, and we're just gonna add three milliliters. Now we're almost ready to reinstall the top cap, but from the factory, mine only came with one bottomless token installed. I think when I go down to 140 for the hardtail, I want it to feel a little bit more progressive. So I'm gonna add two more bottomless tokens onto the top cap. Now you can't exceed the maximum number of bottomless tokens, which is listed on this big table in the manual. For this particular configuration, I can go up to five bottomless tokens. So I'm gonna keep it right in the middle and go with three. So these just thread on, and then the manual calls for four Newton meters of torque with an eight millimeter Allen wrench. Okay. So we're just gonna thread this in carefully. Remember these threads are really fine. Again, trying to be careful not to scratch anything, just taking our time. Now when it starts to get tight, the manual calls for 28 Newton meters of torque or 250 inch pounds. Now if you don't have a flat socket or a cassette tool with a torque wrench adapter, you're gonna have to just go by feel. For reference, pedals take about 360 inch pounds of torque. So 250 is roughly two thirds of that. So we're just gonna kind of carefully tighten it down until it feels nice and snug, but we're not gonna overdo it. There we go. I recently did a full service on the lowers, so everything should be nice and clean. All I'm gonna do here is reapply a layer of grease on the inside of the dust wipers and put the lowers back on. And we'll give the upper stanchions one last clean with isopropyl. Now, definitely make sure you're doing this the right way. It is possible to install these backwards, which would be bad. Then we're just gonna carefully slide the lowers on. And the trick here is to make sure that both of the upper stanchions get into the dust seals without folding the dust seals over. You can take a little bit of finagling and give it a slide. And we're gonna rotate the fork back upwards. Okay, so what we wanna do is make sure the lowers are not pushed up all the way against the spring and the damper. So we'll pull it out just slightly but not all the way off. And what you wanna see is this. You wanna basically be able to look in the holes in the lowers and see a void. Cause we're gonna inject the oil and we don't want the spring and the damper to prevent the oil from going in there. Okay, so you're gonna have to consult the manual for this. I'll put a link down in the description. Make sure you use the right volume per side. In this case, we're aiming for 10 milliliters of the RockShox 030 weight or equivalently the Maxima Plush light oil in each side of the fork. You can now push the lowers back down until you see you make contact with the spring and the damper. If you forget, you can always see a sticker that says which way to turn the rebound knob. That's where you're gonna want the damper adjustment screw. And then on the other side is gonna be the air spring screw. 
Then with your torque wrench, we're aiming for 7.3 Newton meters or equivalently 65 inch pounds. Like so. At this point you can use some isopropyl and wipe away any excess oil. And then on the damper side we're going to install the rebound adjustment knob. You're going to plug the knob in and then tighten with a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench to 0.9 Newton meters, which is not a lot. Okay, so all that remains is to now repressurize the fork. Go with about 62 PSI for starters and see how it feels from there. You don't have to, but I like to intermittently cycle the fork a couple of times as I'm pressurizing it. about 62. Go ahead and reinstall the little dust cap for the top. And that's basically it. Feels super smooth. That debonair spring allows the fork to ride higher up in its travel. And there's really, I mean, there's very little stiction at the top, which is nice. All right, so at this point, it's a really good idea to kind of give everything a nice wipe down with some isopropyl. Perfect. I actually just want to confirm that we did reduce the axle to crown to uh, 21 and a little more than three quarters, which corresponds to 552 millimeters, which is perfect. So the axle to crown is exactly where we want it for the new Kona Hanzo build. Um, so again, we can test out the geometry as it was intended from the factory. Sweet. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for this quick how-to. Hope you found it helpful. Hope you'll follow along with the Kona build. We're going to just do incremental videos, little how-tos here and there, and some reviews along the way. Hope you stay tuned for all that. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.